Déjame buscar el teléfono que está en el teléfono. Estamos en vivo y a todo el color. Dios los bendiga, mis hermanos. Cosas que no son normales, cosas sobrenaturales, por la fe sucede. Aleluya. Abre nuestros ojos como el ser, muéstranos el cielo. Está por ahí, Yasmin, Dios te bendiga. En Jessica, Dios te bendiga. Está por ahí. Vamos a esperar porque todavía más que mis jóvenes. Hay que esperar un poquito más para que se vayan conectando los jóvenes. Así que. Okay. Dios bendiga a todos. Ah, sí, mi hermanito Antonio está. Mi hermanito Antonio, Dios te bendiga. Está por ahí también, se está colado. Dame un like, dame un like, Antonio, dame un like. <ríe> Carmen, por ahí. Ah, mi hija Carla. I love you, Carla, Dios te bendiga. Ala, mi hermanito, Dios te bendiga. Esta clase, sabemos que esta clase es para los jóvenes, pero es para todo el mundo. Así que... Can you guys hear us okay without microphone or anything like that? I just want to make sure you guys can hear us all right. bien, testing, testing, si, si hay un problema con el sonido, por favor, ya no sabe, amén, a ver, por aquí, por favor, mis hermanos, compartan esto, compartan, vamos a ver, si ven que, si ven que un hermanito no está conectado, si ven que se faltan, pasan, pasan, faltan personas, por este, por ejemplo, si no ven por ahí a, a, a Carmen y a Wendy, a los muchachos, pasanlo por ahí, también este, a ver, Angélica está ahí, Dios la bendiga. Emily, Dios te bendiga. God bless you, Emily. Maika, God bless you, que me alegro que estaba ahí. La clase va a ser en inglés, jóvenes, así que no se preocupen. Lo que pasa es que, as soon as we start, put on the switch on. Así que, yo voy a, yo voy a ir por aquí, yo voy a hacer mi parte, voy a compartirlo por aquí con un par de personas. Con un par de personas aquí. Tenemos tiempo, vamos a empezar a las seis. We still got two more minutes. Uh, we're going to be in class 11. Class number 11. So if you guys are looking in your books, we'll be in class study number 11. Uh, faithfulness to all proof. So you guys could go. We're going to be in the book of Daniel. So you guys could be Daniel chapter 1. So you guys could get, go start looking for that right now. Um, Daniel chapter 1 and study number 11. Okay. So I made a, okay. So como dijimos, class number 11, like he said, it's faithfulness. Faithfulness to all proof.
En el momento ya son las 6 de la tarde, it's already 6 o'clock, so we're about to start, start the study. Uh, I'm going to make a prayer, and then Brother Andrew's going to keep going with the uh, study. So let's bow our heads. Dear Father God, we come to your presence, thanking you for this day. Thank you, Father God, for the opportunity that, you, that you've given us to hear and study your word, Father God. The opportunity, Father God, that you have revealed to us. The opportunity, Father God, that at this time, Father God, we ask that you glorify yourself. We ask, Father God, that you bring us the understanding of your word, the illumination of your word, Father God, to our brothers and sisters at the house, to our brothers and sisters that are going to be watching this right now and will be probably watched later on. We ask you, Father God, that you give them the understanding, Father God, and you edify our lives, Father God. Please, Father, I ask for you these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So we're going to be on, uh, like I said before, we're going to be on fast number 11. We're going to be in the book of Daniel, chapter 1. The book of Daniel, chapter 1. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the whole entire chapter. Um, and then after that, uh, Nieve is going to talk a little bit about some of the talking points that we're going to speak about during this class. And then from there, we're going to get more in depth into the class. So class number, study number 11, uh, faithfulness to all proof. If you guys have your Bible open, we're going to be, like I said, in the book of Daniel, chapter 1. And I'm going to read the entire chapter. So, the word of God is read in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And it says, in the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand with some of the articles of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar, to the house of his God, and he brought the articles into the treasure house of his God. Then the king instructed Ashpenaz, the master of, of his eunuchs, to bring some of the children of Israel and some of the king's descendants and some of the nobles, young men in whom there was no blemish, but good-looking, gifted in all wisdom, possessing knowledge and quick to understand, who had ability to serve in the king's palace, and whom they might teach the language and literature of the Chaldeans. And the king appointed for them a daily provision of the king's delicacies and of the wine which he drank, and three years of training for them, so that at the end of that time they might serve before the king. Now from among those of the sons of Judah were Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. To them the chief of the eunuchs gave names. He gave Daniel the name Belteshazzar, to Hananiah, Shadrach, and to Mishael, Meshach, and to Azariah, Abednego. But Daniel proposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's delicacies, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the chief of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Now God had brought Daniel into the favor and goodwill of the chief of the eunuchs. And the chief of the eunuchs said to Daniel, I fear my lord the king, who has appointed your food and drink. For, for why should he see your face looking worse than the young men who are your age? Then you would endanger my head before the king. So Daniel said to the steward, whom the chief of the eunuchs had set over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, Please test your servants for ten days, and let them give us vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then let our appearance be examined before you, and the appearance of the young men who eat the portion of the king's delicacies, and as you see fit, so deal with your servants. So he consented with them in this matter, and tested them ten days. And at the end of ten days, their features appeared better and fatter in flesh than all the young men who ate the portion of the king's delicacies. Thus the steward took away their portion of delicacies and the wine that they were to drink, and gave them vegetables. As for these four young men, God gave them knowledge and skill in all literature and wisdom, and Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Now at the end of the days, when the king had said that they should be brought in, the chief of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar. Then the king interviewed them, and among them all, none was found, like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore they served before the king. And in all matters of wisdom and understanding about which the king examined them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers who were in all his realm. Thus Daniel continued until the first year of King Cyrus. Amen. Amen. Can you hear me? So my brothers, we have already... Um, We've already prayed, right? So let's go into the let's go into the uh, actual topic 
The book says faithfulness to all proof, but I like to say it, faith to a full test. Because that's what pretty much what, the, what the, the class is about. It's about how our faith, their faith was being tested. But we're gonna go into that a little bit. Uh, uh, once we keep going, we're gonna go deeper into that. Now, we already know what the Bible passage is, which is Daniel 1, 1 to 21. The main idea is God honors those who despite adverse circumstances are true to the principles and teachings of this of the scriptures now me what we're gonna do we're gonna stay in your bibles okay stay right there in daniel chapter one through pretty much the whole the whole class because what we're gonna do we're gonna break down those those chapters amen so as we see the first point we're gonna be taking from Daniel chapter 1, we're going to be taking verse 1 through 7. And it says, life is a permanent proof. In other words, life is a permanent test. What it tells you, as we see, so in these verses, what we're seeing is that, number one, what happened to their lives it's pretty much it was predicted it was prophesied by Jeremiah that there was there was gonna rain on them so here comes the Babylonian and what they do they took over their land they took their gold and pretty much put on to them their own principles and laws now they were taken captive and I like, there's something that I that I really like was if, you see, if we take verse number three which says because we're talking about that Daniel and his friends, they weren't like your regular, you know, you know, guys. They were they weren't your regular ones. Now this this is what he says. Then the king commanded Asperas, his chief in Norwich, to bring some of the people of Israel from the royal family and the noble nobility. So these guys. These four guys, these four youth, they were, this, the, I was reading, they were about, the, when I was reading, I was deep in, they were about 16 years old. Daniel was about 16 years old when he was taken from his land, from his parents, from everything he knew, and he was put on this, he was put on the, on the king, on the kingdom, actually in the palace to serve the king, but he wasn't serving the king, he was put to test. First of all, he was put to test. They took, and now, there's something else that I like. He says that, number four, youth without blemish. So, he didn't, he don't, he, what he did, he took the best. So, we're looking at Daniel. We're looking at his, the, the other, the, his friends, that they were all, they were taken from royalty to royalty. But now, they, they were from the prince, prince and princesses. They came down now to serve the king. But they weren't going to serve the king. He put them so they could be trained because they had some special qualifications that he wanted. So now he put them to train on them so he could train them. Um, and just to add to add to what he's saying, too, I just want you guys to take a second and put yourself in, in the youth's shoes. Imagine if, you know, you're home and all of a sudden somebody busts out your door mm -hmm. and they take you and they say, you're coming with me. Now... You 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 leave. They they take you away as a prisoner. Mm -hmm. They separate you from the house that you've always known. They separate you from the family that you've always known. And now they even separating you from the faith that you grew up with. And so I want you to put yourself in their shoes and think like, how would you feel in that situation if you get completely removed from everything you've ever known? You have no idea what's going to happen in your future. And that's what happened with these youth. Mm -hmm. They had no idea what was going to happen with their future. And so Nebuchadnezzar went and they captured that land and they conquered that land. And they took the youth to a place that they've never been before. So they're in a strange land. They have no idea what's going on. And they have no idea what's going to happen to themselves. Mm -hmm. You know? And so they've completely been separated from everything that they've ever known. And now... Like, he, like, like Brother Nieves was saying, and now at this point, the king is looking for somebody who could serve him, right? And they turn these youth into, into servants, you know what I mean? And, and now they want to prepare them 
and they want to teach them in the ways of the king and how the Babylonians do things within themselves, right? And so, you know what I mean? If we if we if we if we see their life story, you know what I mean? If we go to the book real quick, um, one the one of the first points that it talks about in the book is uh, let me find it here. It says um, the enemy tests our faith. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really interesting. You know what I mean? Um, while, while I was studying, they had a lot of different, um, a lot of different points come up. But one of the points was that uh, God tests our obedience, mm -hmm. but the enemy tests our faith. Mm. <laughs> and it's kind of like interesting if you really think about it, right? Okay, so you're saying that God doesn't test our faith; the enemy tests our faith. But God tests our obedience. In other words, there's things that are kind of coming to our life. Where God is going to see and we're still going to be obedient to his word. Mm -hmm. And we're still going to listen to what he wants to, 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 or what he has shown us through the scripture. And so while we become obedient, and this was the, the key point, while we, while we submit ourselves to the word of God and while we stay obedient, our faith grows because God will continue to bless us, right? But the enemy tests your faith to see if you're going to fall, to see if you're going to turn your back to God. And this is why this point was important where it says the enemy tested their faith because the enemy removed them from everything that they knew. You know what I mean? And, and, and what I like to think is that if, if you see Nebuchadnezzar was smart, yeah. he didn't take adults nope. to serve him. He took youth. Why? Right? Why did he take a youth to serve him? Because youth are old enough that they could work but they're young enough that they could still be manipulated. Be yeah, they could, exactly. They could be molded. They could be shaped. They could be manipulated. So he wanted to take these youth and separate them completely from everything that they had ever learned about who the real God was mm -hmm. and serve the God that he wanted them to serve. Yeah. Also, um, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I want to say, keep in mind, he mentioned a point that I, that I definitely wanted to talk about that, which is obedience. And throughout this lesson, I want you to have that. I want you to have that keyword. The keyword in here today is obedience. But we're gonna see how obedience works. We're gonna see how obedience works in our in our in our, in our favor. But also, we're gonna see the adversity. We I want we want to present the adversity that they had because it's very that we that we see that we can understand what they were going through. They were going through something easy. Their whole life has changed. Their God has, you know, they wanted to present to them another God. Everything they knew had just literally was changed, had, had been changed. And they went from royalty to serving royalty. There's a big difference between being royalty to serving royalty. Even though they were still in a palace. Even though they had, they still had, you know, they were surrounded with royalty. It wasn't the royalty that they, they, they were supposed to be around. So, number, so... In fact, let's take number four, I mean five, and five on. He says that they were given, because they were royalty, they were given the same food that the king was, was eating. The same royal food that the king was eating, the same drinks, the same wine, the same food. And let me tell you, if you are a king, especially Nebuchadnezzar, he, he, wasn't, he wasn't, you know, like a cheap king. None of, the, none of the kings back then were cheap. In, in fact, he was overruling them. He was growing in power. So he didn't have no little thing. He didn't have no, you know, couple of grapes here and all. He had the best of the best being served to him. And he was serving the best of the best to their, you know, to the ones that were being, they were being loyal. They were being serving. They were being, um, they were preparing them to serve, to serve the, um, the king later on. So, and I want you to, I want you to, um, Think of something too that is right there on number five. He says that they were gonna be literally trained, taught for a period of three years. Now, they, and at the, at, the, at the period of three years, they were gonna be they were gonna be brought up to the king to see if they passed. Three years, they were gonna teach them. So they, okay, we're gonna take you from we're gonna take you with all the ones we're gonna take you we're gonna train you for three years now you have to learn all of our customs you have to learn our language now not only did they were taken not only 
also their names, their, their names were changed, but now they have to learn another culture. Everything around them had to be transformed. And I, and, and I kind of wanted to, to add a little bit to that last point. I'm going to get to that real quick. But um, I think it was interesting because if you read in verse 6, it says, mm -hmm. Now from among those of the sons of Judah were Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. So this calls my attention because you need to understand they were not the only youth taken. Mm -hmm. There was a multitude of youth that were taken to serve the king, like he said, so they could be tested and tried, right? And this was their test. Would they turn their back on God when they were presented with false gods? You know what I mean? Would they become disobedient to the word? They had an excuse. They could have said, you know, I'm a slave now. I have no choice. They had an excuse yep. on why they could have stopped serving God, but that's not what they chose to do. They chose to continue to follow God. And we need to understand that in our lives as Christians, every one of us are going to be tried, tested. Uh, you know what I mean? We're all going to have to go through situations. And I wanted to read a piece of 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12 to 19. Right? 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12 to 19. It says like this. Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened to you. But rejoice to the extent that you partake in Christ's suffering, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. If you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you, for the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. On their part, he is blasphemed, but on your part, he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, or as a busybody in other people's matters. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this matter. For the time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God. And if it begins with us first, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? Now if the righteous one is scarcely saved, where will the ungodly and the sinner appear? Therefore let those who suffer according to the will of God Commit their souls to him in doing good as to a faithful creator. And this is this is Peter here speaking. But what is he saying? He's saying we're all going to go through trials. Mm -hmm. Don't act like it's something crazy. Every single Christian has to go through trials, right? Every single Christian needs to go through something tough or something difficult in their life. And I wanted to add to the last point that, that Brother Nieva said. And he said they changed their names. Mm -hmm. And to me, that was something real impactful, right? Because I heard something not too long ago, but it made sense. It says, if you can change someone's name, you can essentially change their identity. Yes. So the easiest way to change somebody's identity is to change their name. Mm -hmm. So they took their Hebrew name and they changed it to a pagan name. Yes. They wanted to completely change the identity of the youth, right? And so... If we read, why is changing a name important, right? Let's say we go real quick to the book of Revelation, chapter 2, verse 17. Mm -hmm. In the book of Revelation, it says, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh, will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and I will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, mm -hmm. which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth. In other words, God is saying that even our names, if we overcome, will also be changed. Why? Because when you change someone's name, you can change their identity. And we need to change our identity before we can enter into the kingdom of heaven. And essentially, that's what he was doing, but he was doing the reverse. He wanted to change their name to separate them from God and not draw them closer to him. And, you know, I want to talk about, in the book says, the enemy tests your identity. And right now... I know we're struggling. One of the things we struggle, we struggle because I, we struggle as youth is because we're, we're in a lear learning process. You're not only in a learning process. Us as Christians, we come, we, we, we are reborn. And since we are reborn, we're also, even though you are youth, we are all, sometimes we are also youth in the spirit. And our life gets tested. Our identity gets tested. And I like that because our brother Jason the other day, about a week ago, he gave a, he gave a, a, a preaching about our identity as in Christians. And I need you and I need you to start thinking about who you are, who we are, and especially youth, 
especially you youth, you know, there are some times that your your faith is gonna be tested, your obedience is gonna be tested, but you're gonna find you're gonna find that out in your identity because that's what's gonna identify you compared to the, are you gonna follow or are you gonna stand out to what you believe? And that's what we're gonna walk into. We're gonna be uh, now we're gonna jump into and also do do me a favor. Do yourself a favor. Write down. We didn't. I didn't do. It, I don't know if my brother, if the brother uh, Andrew, did it. Um, the the what the names what it meant in Hebrew, because when a prophet, not only a prophet, when a child was born in Israel, the name that was given it was because he had a meaning. So their name had a meaning. Daniel had a meaning. All the other names had a meaning, but they changed that to another meaning, which I don't have that, but I would like you to find it. I'm probably going to find that at the house because it just came up because we don't have that much time. But that, put that on, you know, put that, write that down, boom. Find the, the um, finding out the, uh, what, the names and what they're going to be, what they got changed to, okay? Now, I want to go to the second point, which is number two, what it says, life is a pro product of our decisions. Now we're gonna be tested on this. Life is the product of our decisions. And there's a couple of questions that I like here. There's a question that I really, really like here, which says, um, is your experience with God something real or just a religious feeling that we can easily modify? That's powerful. Let me, let me do this, let me say it again. It's right there on your book, guys. Number two, right above point A, is a question. It says, is, your, is our experience with God something real or just a religious feeling that we can easily modify? And let's go a little bit deeper because I think that's one of the main questions in this, in this class that we want to learn. Amen. And, and, and going off of that same question, right, it, it's, it's an intriguing question because we have to be real with ourselves. We have to be honest with ourselves. Is this really something, uh, you know, is our faith based on something firm? Is our foundation firm? Or like Nevis was saying, or is it something that could be modified? And we see that with the same story. We see that with what Daniel uh, and, and the youth went through, right? They were tested to the point they were going to be, uh, they were going to they were gonna show if they really had a, a biblical foundation of their faith and what they believed in, what they were taught since they were younger, or if it was something that because of the situation that they were in, was going to be was going to be changed, right? And that's the question. You know, is is your situation, what you're going through, is it going to change or is it going to modify your belief? Mm -hmm. And there's, I want to read the, the the first the first sentence in that in that paragraph because I think it speaks to really the main point. It says the the Babylonians removed these young people from their homes, changed their names, and try to change their customs, but they couldn't change their hearts. Hmm. And that part right there is key. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? What's in your heart? You know what I mean? Only God knows. We can't judge other people because we don't know what's in their heart. But God knows what's in people's hearts. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So what's in your heart? And that's why sometimes it's good for us to do a self-analysis, to reflect on our own personal lives. Because nobody's perfect. None of us are perfect. You know what I mean? But we have to reflect and say, you know, when stuff gets hard in our life, are we going to stand firm? Or is our faith going to be modified? And that is sad that a lot of you, when stuff gets hard for them, instead of looking for help or looking for answers, they want to change the gospel of God mm -hmm. so that they can live the way they want to live mm -hmm. instead of changing their life or looking for help so that they can modify their life and be obedient to the word of God. And so then you have to ask yourself that question. What's in my heart? Is my heart not where it needs to be? Am I not firm in the faith? And these are questions that we need to ask ourselves as Christians. And that's everybody. That's not just you. That's... Everybody needs to ask themselves that question. I know. So, I like, uh, right there, um, number two, the, the first point, A, the importance of a solid conviction. Now, I want to combine the, the conviction with the identity. Here we go. What's conviction? A firm belief. If you have identity, you're going to have a, you're gonna have a firm belief. You're going to have a conviction that nothing around you because of the identity that you have is going gonna, is gonna to move that or it's going to change that from you. 
Do you understand what we're trying to say? So what we're saying is that as you're growing up, as you're growing up in the faith, we are, we are growing up, we are, you're learning, you go to school, you have a future, you're planning about doing stuff, you're planning about going to school, you're planning about different things, but right now, that doesn't determine who you are. That just determines who, what you're going to do in life. Mm -hmm. What determines who you are in life is conviction, is, is your identity. Why is your identity? Why is your conviction? Your conviction is to be firm, firmly on the doctrine of the church, the doctrine of Jesus Christ. What is our doctrine? In case you don't know, because there are people out there, there are people out there we don't who doesn't know what's our doctrine. They're, they're, they're saying, is this, is this. Let me tell you what's our doctrine. Right now, our doctrine is three things. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, that Jesus Christ died for our sins, and through him we are saved. We don't need to know anything else about that. Anything else is to be added on. But our foundation, our conviction, our identity is through Jesus Christ. Amen. And that's the conviction that they had. Now, they didn't have the conviction, so to speak, of Jesus Christ because mm -hmm. he wasn't there yet. Yes. But they had the conviction of, they knew who their God was. Oh. You know what I mean? And to me, that's so powerful, right? Because, mm -hmm. I mean, if, if you're a youth, you know what I'm saying, and you find yourself in that situation, how easy would it be to reject God? Mm -hmm. It's so easy. It's so easy to say, man, my life, I lost my life. I'm a slave now. Mm -hmm. It's so easy to completely lose who you are. And it's so easy to be able to be um, um, sidetracked on the conviction that you have of who God is. You know what I'm saying? And, and I don't judge any youth because mm -hmm. at any moment in time, we could all fall. We could all fail. You know, even me when mm -hmm. I was younger, right? When I was a youth, there was a time where I backslid, mm -hmm. right? Where I didn't come to church for, for years mm -hmm. uh, before God spoke to me, amen, through Brother Antonetti. And they used him to bring me back to church. But mm -hmm. what I'm trying to say is that, you know what I mean? Like anybody could backslide. But then that's the thing. If I backslid, what was my conviction at first? Yes. Did I really have the conviction of Christ in me? Did I really have a solid foundation of who God was in my life? And the answer is no, because if I had a solid foundation, I would have never backslid. But if we backslid, it's because there's something in us that's weak, something in us mm -hmm. that needs to be fixed. And that's why I want you guys to focus on, like, where's your conviction? Where's that, 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 that mindset of... I'm going to serve Christ or, you know what I mean? No matter what comes my way, I'm going to keep walking. You know what I mean? Because it never, it's never going to get easy. You know, anybody who tells you that walking in Christ is easy, it's a lie. It's not true. You know what I mean? It's difficult, but we have the promise of the Holy Spirit that's going to guide us through anything that we went through. And we see that in this story. We see that when they decided that they were not going to put their faith in God. And what did they do? They said, we're not going to eat. From the food. We're not going to drink from the wine that the king is going to offer us. Why? Because they knew that that food was dedicated to, to false yeah, gods. Go yeah, we're going to go there. Yeah. Before we go there, Amen. I want to touch, I want to touch a couple of things that brother said. He said that we will backslide. And you know what? The, you know what? For those who, what sometimes when we backslide, that could also, doesn't mean that we don't have a, a strong foundation. It means that our foundation is still built and the learning, what we learn from that backslide, what we learn from failing is, you know what? You're going to learn a lot of things when we fail. You're going to learn how, how the Holy Spirit feels inside of us. You're going to learn what it's, what it's like not to, um, para de no agradar a Dios. To have done something against them, how we feel. Now we gotta keep that in mind because we have a learning right there, and that's gonna that that could also work two ways. It could work to destruction, or it could build you up. It could build up your identity because you already know what what it feels like. That's a consequence. You 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 gotta think about the consequences before you do the act. You understand? What well, we don't want to do that, but sometimes some people there are learning experience that you will sometimes you will learn through that. You learn that I learned through that, and I'm still learning. But through struggles, though, you know what? That's I can look at it two ways. As his mercy, as his grace, and first me trying to be more obedient. Now, you have to time? Okay, now I wanna touch about I wanna touch something. He said that he didn't know Christ, but he knew of God. Because Christ wasn't there yet, but he had been revealed throughout the whole test the old the whole old testament. Later on, as you keep growing and learning, you're going to find out that God, Jesus was revealed throughout everything, the tabernacle, in the, in the, all the sacrifice, everything, everything was, was all centered in Jesus, but it wasn't his time to be revealed yet, so what I want you to understand is that even though they didn't have the conviction in, Christ, in, in Jesus Christ, but they had the conviction in Jehovah, they had the conviction in their God, the God of Israel, and God left this commandment for them to follow, 
He left the law, but that law was the, the foundation, the root of that law was 10 things, 10 commandments. And we're going to find that. Write this down. Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20. And I'm not going to read all of them, but I want to focus on, on the first four. I'm not going to read them because, you know, time is running. But the first four, the first five talks about what? They talk about, number one, being faithful to him. Number one, only adoring him. Only giving them the glory. So now that we see that Daniel knew this, he said that they could not, that they could not um, worship statues. They could not worship other things. They had to worship only God. And now Daniel knew that and he knew that the food that was given, that was given, the food that was given to the king was before that was offered to false gods. So he knew that that food was corrupted. He couldn't eat that because that was already offered. That was already offered to the other gods and that was a word of worship. If he was going to eat that, he was going to worship the same God. And God knew, and Daniel knew that. Daniel knew he couldn't eat that because that was against not only the law, but it was against the first Ten Commandments. And if you want to follow, if you want to be obedient, say, how God, how can I be obedient? God left us Ten Commandments only. Any, everything, every other thing is to shape us up. But if we follow the Ten Commandments, even Jesus said it. If you follow my commandments, you complete the law. Huh? If you and then and what's the law and then and what and what's the law compared to? What's the law all covered with? If you if you love one another, you have already committed. You already done the law. I love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, and your soul. So, so let's go ahead and um. So let's go ahead and jump into chapter one, verse eight. You are you good with that? Huh? You good? You have anything else to say? On uh, on on what I just said? Yeah, real quick. Um, so real fast. Uh, talking about talking about uh, the heart. There's there's a part there's a part where um, I forgot to write it down. Unfortunately, I'm sorry. But there's a part in the Bible where it says that sometimes we we fall into temptation because the desires are already in our heart. Mm -hmm. The desires are already in our heart to commit that 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 sin. You know what I mean? Whether it's you know what I mean it could be anything. You know what I mean? I, I'm just gonna use these examples. But like let's say to take a drink of alcohol, right? The desire is already in your heart, yeah. and then you fall to that desire, mm -hmm. or to do drugs. The desires in your heart, and then you fall to those desires, right? And so a lot of times the desires of the human heart is what pushes us to commit those sins. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that's where we got to be very, very careful that you got to understand, you know what I mean? The desires of your heart, the desires of what, you know what I mean? What are you trying to do or what, what, what do you want to do that might lead you to fall, that might lead you mm -hmm. to sin. And that's exactly. where, that's where you guys need to be uh, uh, really, really careful with that. And because they had, because they had the identity, they knew where temptation was coming from. They were tempted with the food. You think they wanted to eat vegetables instead of eating all the delicacies? They were tempted, they, but they knew better. They were tested. They, were, they knew better not to touch that. And then number eight. Let's go to number eight because the whole class, the whole class obedience is is circled in this verse. It says, number one, uh, chapter one, verse eight. But Daniel. Resolved that he wouldn't defile himself with the king's food or with the wine that he drank. Therefore, he asked the chief that um, and go to allow him not to defile himself. You know, he didn't want. In other words, he said that you know what? I'm not going. If I eat this food, which is which is given. As a sacrifice to other gods, I'm going to get contaminated. That's what I like the word. The word in Spanish is, in español, he said, Yo no me quiero contaminar con esta comida del rey. I he put in his life, puso, eh, dice, Daniel puso en su corazón no contaminarse. Digo, Daniel puso en su corazón no contaminarse. Y hombre, hoy, God's telling you, follow that same path. Follow that same Put in your heart first. And you know what? Real quick, there is no... What I like about Hebrew, the Old Testament, is that it, I was test, I was studying one time, and there's not a word for mind, for brain. Everything's through the heart. So as soon as they put it, that means that he made a decision in his life. And that's what this is says. He says, number two, he says, life is the product of our decisions. So he made a decision of not getting contaminated, of honoring God, even if he had to eat vegetables. And I think that, like, if we take, if we, if we just take the story and we relate it to just everyday living, right? Mm -hmm. 
you know what I'm saying? Um, that's the same thing. We cannot contaminate ourselves as Christians with the world. So, you know, it, it, I, 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 I preached about this one time where I taught about it. I said that one time God had given a vision to somebody. And he saw a big table, and on that table there was a bunch of foods, delicacies. Mm -hmm. It was like a feast, anything that you could think of to eat. And the other table was smaller, it still had good food on it, but it was so much smaller. And everybody was rushing to the big table. And few people went to the small table with the other food in it. And the person asked God, like, God, what are you trying to tell me with the vision that you're giving me? And God said, what you see, the big table, is the world and everything the world has to offer. And everybody you see running to that table is everything that they want to eat. You know what I mean? The world offers us so many things and so many people are quick to run to the table and contaminate themselves with the things of the world. But the other table represented the people who, has, who had um, separated themselves for God. The people who wouldn't contaminate themselves with the world. And it's the same thing that we see in the story of Daniel. Where everybody else, and that's the important thing, like I said before, there was a lot of you that were called. It wasn't just no. Daniel that was called, right? A lot of you were called, but these were the only four that chose not to contaminate yeah. themselves with the new, the new laws of, of Nebuchadnezzar. And that's what you got to understand that as a Christian or a, a, as a youth, you have your own identity. And it doesn't matter what you see other people doing. They could be Christians themselves. They could be brothers in Christ. But you need to establish who you are in Christ by yourself. You can't follow their footsteps yes. because that person can't lead you to salvation. Mm -hmm. Only Jesus Christ can do that. So when you're when you're about to do something or make a decision, you need to ask yourself and, and have the conviction of the Holy Spirit that you're making the right decision. Because if not, it's possible that you're contaminating yourself with the world and that's not what God wants for you. And also, this is what I want to see. Look, now look. Now let's take to one, let's take one, one, one more step. Now, once he put in the heart, he said, you know what? He, 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 he put that in heart, but as soon as he put that in his heart, as soon as he made the decision, God started working in him. As soon as he made that decision, as soon as that thought went in his mind, as soon as he was in his heart, God already put him in grace. So you already passed. Amen. So now I'm going to, so what happened first? He put him in grace. What happens? He, he said, he asked him, he didn't, he didn't go over there and he didn't fight with the guy who was bringing the food. He said, you know what? I'm a son of the, I'm a son of the, the, the true God and I demand that you don't bring me this food. No, he said, you know what? He went humbly. Please, yes. let me honor my God. Don't make me eat this food. Let me, you know, bring, me, bring us vegetables. And I'm paraphrasing, you know, make it easier. You know, bring us vegetables. You know, bring us water. We don't want the wine, the best wine. We don't want it. And what did he say? But you know what? If I do this, you're going to change. Mm -hmm. You're going to look weak and I'm going to be in trouble. He says, you know what? Let's try this for 10 days. Let's try this for 10 days. He said, all right. And I'm paraphrasing what comes out because I want you to understand something. I want you to understand the faithfulness and I want you to understand the obedience and the conviction of these four guys, these four youth. He said, let me have them. Let's try it for 10 days. And if I look, you know, like what he said, you know, but just try it. He was all right. He put them in grace right there. After the ten days, they look stronger, more clearly. Their 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 flesh, their their as in blood, what is it? Their 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 face. Um, how they were. They looked. Yeah. They, they looked way better than the other ones. Now this is what I'm thinking. They tried it for ten days, but they were actually there for three years. So that doesn't mean their conviction. Okay, I'm gonna try this for ten days. God's gonna put me. I'm gonna look better. But I'm now since I already tried it. Now I'm gonna eat from. No, they said you know what. They were there for three years. That means that for three years, they didn't drink wine. For three years, they only drank water. For three years, they didn't eat meat. For three years, they didn't eat all the delicacies that they, they ate what they were supposed to eat because they wanted to honor God. And I think a cool thing too is that when you read the story, it says that Daniel fell into favor and goodwill mm -hmm. with, uh, with the eunuch, with the, with, his lead, with the person who was responsible for him. You know what I mean? And, 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 that's, and that's what people need to understand is that when God is with you, when you make a decision in your heart, to obey God. The people around you, you're going to fall into favor with those people. Mm -hmm. And they're going to help you reach the purpose that God has for you. And that's what they decided. And I want to read a small piece right here, a reflection of, 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 of what the under, under letter B, it says, daily we face situations that confront us to live according to what the word of God teaches us or to yield to the sinful circumstances that surround us. The decision to not contaminate is the best response to diabolical strategies. 
That's powerful. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's powerful. The decision to not contaminate is the best response to diabolical strategies. In other words, when Satan comes up with a strategy against you, the best option that you can do is to not contaminate yourself or do what he said here. He decided to say, you know what? For 10 days, I just want you to test it out. Mm -hmm. In other words, but, but really what Daniel was doing was he was testing God. He wasn't, but he, I don't want to say he was testing God, yeah. but he, would, he had his faith in God saying, I know my God is going to answer me. So give me vegetables and see what happens after 10 days and see how I look after 10 days. And like he said, after 10 days, they looked healthier. They looked fatter. Mm -hmm. There was something different about them. And it wasn't, it, the spirit gave me that it wasn't the food that they were eating. That's it right. was the fact that they decided that they were going to preserve themselves for God. Mm -hmm. And that's why God put his favor upon them. It had nothing to do with the food. Mm -hmm. It had everything to do with the fact that they separated themselves for God and said, you know what? We're going to follow our God and we're going to be obedient to him and not eat of the, the food that, that technically was, was sacrificed to, to, to false gods. Andrew, let me ask you a question. Would you say that they were under pure pressure? Absolutely. Why? Because all the other youth were there. All the youth were there. They were seeing, they were seeing everything that, 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 that they were doing. And I'm sure that they even went to them. The Bible doesn't say it, but we got to yeah. use our imagination and say, why are you not, guys not eating? I mean, we're eating better than what we ate when we lived in, in Judah, oh, in the land of Judah. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, why do you why do you not want to eat? This is the be, this is the best food that we've had yeah. in, in years, or maybe even ever. And you're gonna reject it? Yes. And that's what a lot of youth bring to you. Like, wait, what? You know, you're young. We could do so many things. We can have fun. We could go out. We could that's party. Right. We could do all this stuff. That's the best fun you're gonna have. Like they say, oh, you're young. You gotta live your life. Yeah, live it up. Live yeah. it up. That's you know, it. You don't live once. <laughs> exactly. Yolo. You know what I mean? But what? Like what? But, but are you going to listen to that peer pressure and talk about that? Talk well, about let me that. talk about a little bit about peer pressure because we say, we know that they were from the tribe of Judah. Now, how many tribes did Israel have? Yeah. They had 12, 12 tribes. Yeah. So there were four of them that were taken from Judah, but there were other tribes too that were there that were living around that were conquered and they were also taken. So it wasn't just all them four. It wasn't just, it was a lot. Yeah. Because they, they took everything. They took some of the gold. They said they took everything. Yes. So now they're under pure pressure. Their identity, their conviction, everything wanted everything to be changed. But them four, the, the Bible doesn't talk about in that time, doesn't talk about many, but talk about them four. Mm -hmm. He always mentions them four, but there's a point what there's a point what the what these four you are in the Bible. Because they're not only in this chapter. And we're gonna talk about later. We're gonna talk about a little bit about later on, and you guys probably know about it. But real quick, I want to read you guys a verse. It's in James chapter four, verse four, and it says, "You adulteress, do you not know that friendship with the world is hostility toward God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God." Uh, yes. So they decided that they wanted to be friends with God and not. Of the new king and the new world and the world mm -hmm. that they were that they were living, mm -hmm. and that's the decisions that you guys have to make too. Are you going to be friends with the world? Because I understand that you interact with worldly people mm -hmm. every day. It happens whether it's at work, whether it's at school, even people in your own family that don't serve Christ. It happens all the time. But the question is, are you going to befriend them to the point where you're going to start doing what they're doing? Are, are you know what I mean? And if you do that, and if you become a friend of the world. Then you all of a sudden, now you're an enemy with God. And that's what we don't want. But we see how when Daniel decided to become friends with God, when Daniel decided to be obedient to the word, how God had blessed him in everything that he did. It was, God put his favor upon him. It wasn't like, you know what I mean? It wasn't that uh, they, they looked weaker. It wasn't that they, they were, they, you know, they didn't pass their classes. If anything, it says, well, we're going to get to that later. But it said yes. they came out to be the smartest Ex well, yeah, with the most wisdom. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, we're going to get into that. Yeah, soon. Yeah, yeah. Pretty soon. <laughs> pretty soon. Pretty soon, guys. Now, I want to talk about real quick so we can move on. We were talking about, you know, the things of the world. Now, if we, they could get, they, they could have gotten rebellious. Let me tell you why. Because right now, the decisions that, the, that our parents and grown-up makes affect the youth. You say, so he says, now why are we being turned to servants when it's their fault? They were the ones that were in obedience. Amen. They were the ones that were, they weren't giving sacrifices. God talked to us about it. So now, why do we have to follow? Why do we have to suffer these consequences? So you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it up now. It's true. That's because that's I'm gonna leave it up now. But they decided not to do it. Now let's move on. Where you wanna go right now? Let's move on to the next one. To the to the next point. 
which we already talked about the decisions of the heart, the importance of the convictions. Now let's talk about the fidelity. Let's talk about how faithfulness to God produces good results. All right? So let's talk about this real quick, guys. So faithfulness to God, that the word faithfulness talks about just literally one thing. Someone who is faithful is obedient. Simple as that. If you're obedient, you're being faithful. If you're obedient, you're following God's word. If you're obedient, you're trying to do the best to do what? To honor God. You're trying to do the best to do what? To please Him. Amen? Uh, I, I want to read verse 17. Mm -hmm. It says, As for these four young men, God gave them knowledge and skill in all literature and wisdom, and Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Mm -hmm. So right there, you could tell that they were separated. There was something different and special about these youth because they decided to separate themselves. God decided to manifest himself more. The more that you separate yourself from the world, the more God can manifest himself inside of you. That's why Daniel and these youth were able to see these visions and they had knowledge. Yes. It wasn't saying that the rest of them were dumb. It was saying that there was no one smarter mm -hmm. than them in all of the youth that they had brought in mm -hmm. in that time for, for them to enter into the king's court. And I think we could get now into, into how how Yeah, how they were blessed and how and so God manifests himself. Do you have the verses? Look for the it's, verses. Yeah, it's like 18. Hang on, give me a second. So now we're looking. Now let's go back to the one thing that literally changed their whole life. It wasn't that they were taken. The one thing that changed their whole life was when he decided not to get corrupted, not to get contaminated. As soon as he put that, that put God put him in grace. Mm -hmm. Number one, he put the, um, the, um, the serpent who was bringing the food, put them in grace. Now, when they go in front of the king, what does he say? When they go, now three years have passed. They're gonna go in front of the king. Look what he says. Verse um, 17, I believe. It's 18. 18. So when they were brought before the king? Yes. Yes, 18. It says, now mm -hmm. at the end of the days, when the king had said that they should be brought in, this is at the end of the three years, mm -hmm. the chief of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar. Then the king interviewed them, and among them all, none was found like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Mm -hmm. Therefore they served before the king, and in all matters... Of wisdom and understanding about which the king examined them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians mm -hmm. and astrologers who were in all his realm. So what do they do? Number one, they decided to honor God. And decided to maintain themselves, how? Pure. Not to get corrupted for three years. But now we see God's blessing. Now not only see God's favor, but now we see his blessing. Where he's going to put them. Not what the king was going to put them. But where God was gonna place them, man. So, um, this uh, uh, you read a verse. You read a verse. Which one about what? Which is the one that Daniel was given? All the stuff that was given to Daniel, the visions and all that. Oh yeah, seventeen. That's one of them. Let's read, read seventeen. Listen to <laughs> verse seventeen and eighteen. This is what God does with them. It says, verse seventeen. As for these four young men, God gave them knowledge and skill in all literature and wisdom. Hmm. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Now I'm going to jump to verse 19. Mm -hmm. It says, Then the king interviewed them, and among them all, none was found like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore they served before the king. Verse 20. And in all matters of wisdom and understanding, about which the king examined them, he found them ten times better mm -hmm. than all the magicians and astrologers who were in all his realm. Now we, now we're going to, now we're going to, now we see God's hand. Now we see the outcome, not the consequence, but the blessing. Amen. Before, because they wanted to be obedient, not only, not only they, they, they were the ones, it wasn't the food, it wasn't the vegetables, it was the act in their heart that they wanted to do to get themselves separated from the world, separated from everything else. And out of all of them, out of all of them, they were right there. He's, the word says that Daniel, we always, when we read Daniel, he's always next to the king. But he wasn't there by himself. His three friends, the ones who decided to go along, they said, you say what? I'm not going to get contaminated. They were also working next to the king. And the other ones, he doesn't say anything. But those four, they were right there. They were given the best job. Amen. They were given the best position. They were given the most of the wisdom. They were given the best now, since they decided to honor God, God put them in the best place, in a mejor sitio, in a mejor lugar. At the first time, in the best place. 
in that time. And we see how the decision to be faithful to God, they didn't only bless them in this, but if you keep going further in the story of Daniel, mm -hmm. he had even more profound dreams and visions. Yes. And we know that everything that happened with the fiery furnace, you know what I mean? And how the youth were saved from that. And all, the, all that happened, but it was established with this story when they decided mm -hmm. to not contaminate themselves. And I just want to read one part of the book, and then I'll let um, Brother Yevis finish it off. But it says, we need Christians today who intend in their hearts to put God first in everything. In the classroom, in the dining room, on the playground, in front of friends, everywhere and at all times. The best thing you can do is to decide in your heart to feed on the word, to seek the presence of God, to participate in healthy and recreational activities, and to be an example and witness for others. And I think that it, it's, it explains it itself. I really can't even add to that. I think that's very powerful, you know what I mean? So we need to decide in our heart that we're gonna seek God. We're gonna put him first in everything, no matter where we're at. We need, to, we need, we need people to understand that we are different and don't be ashamed of being different. Okay, now, I want to say something, guys, that not only did Daniel serve this king, he served three kings, and on all three kingdoms, he was put in grace. He was in the same spot that God put him. Now, later on, we see their faith also being tested. But you know why? <laughs> you know why? Why? <laughs> Estos jóvenes pudieron estar en el horno de fuego. You know, you know why, why they could be in the fiery furnace? You know why they could go in the oven? Because they already had, they already had pleased God in the beginning. Mm -hmm. They already had God already in the furnace first. You know, because they were able to stand in that burning fire. The decision wasn't in that time. They took that decision as soon as they walked in. And the enemy wanted to try him again because he was mad that they passed the first time. See, like it says in the beginning, the enemy tests your faith. Yes. He tested their faith. They passed. And now he wanted to test their faith again later on in the future, and again they passed. But why? How come they passed? Because of their conviction. Amen. The conviction, the same conviction they had in verse 1. In chapter 1, that's the same conviction they had when yes. they went inside. Yes. When, he, when Daniel went to the lion's lens, why? Because he didn't want the same thing. Mm -hmm. Why? Because he didn't want to, he, didn't, he, had, he had to pray to God. Amen. He had to pray to God. Hey, you know what? Un decreto, an order from the king. You can't pray to the other God. But you know what? Daniel's he stayed the same. The same conviction he had in verse 8. The same conviction he had. He said, I'm not gonna, I have to pray to my God. I have to please him. Then it goes again. These three young men. Okay, you, you need to bow down to the session. I didn't eat for three years. I, if I didn't eat for three years, I ate vegetables for three years and drink water. You think I'm going to bow down to the statue? You don't throw me in the fire. That's right. Because I know where I'm going. Yeah. Go ahead. That's it. Okay. Well, guys, so so let's 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 um we're about done. Two minutes, real quick. Let's recap, because I want you to understand something. I want you to understand that the key is being obedient, yes. pleasing God, and the Ten Commandments. You do that, you're good, guys. Okay, we don't we don't make it as hard. It's, don't make it complicated on yourself. But the one thing is, you need to build on your identity. Yes. What's your conviction? Your conviction is gonna build it. Being heart. obedient. Obedience is going to build your identity and your conviction. God bless you. We love you. Okay? If there's any, please, if there's any questions, you can inbox Brother Andrew. You can inbox myself in regards to the, to the, um, to the uh, lesson. Also, uh, <laughs> uh, we're going to do a prayer. We're going to do a prayer. So we can finish, and brother, I want uh, brother Andrew to finish, and you know, give the prayer. Amen. Let's pray. God, we come before your presence. We give you thanks. We give you praise, Lord yes, God, God, for allowing us to be here and give this class to the youth, Lord God. We we thank you for using us as instruments, Lord God. We humble ourselves before your presence, and we pray, Lord God, that we can have the same conviction yes, that God. Daniel and the youth had, Lord God, mm -hmm. that we can know our foundation, that we could be firm in our faith, Lord Jesus Christ. That we could reject the world and everything the world has to offer us and continue to walk in your grace, Lord God. We ask that your protection be over us and over the youth, Lord God. We ask that you continue to guide them, Lord God. That the word that they heard today, Lord God, can edify their lives. That they can put into practice what they heard here today, Lord Jesus Christ. And that they can leave, Lord God, with a new understanding of your word and what it means to be a child of God. And we ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Holy, one more thing. You see how we gave the class? 
This is how we're supposed to get the class every Tuesday. Let it happen. God bless you. God bless you guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh,